The Old Virginia by Stuart Edward White. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. The Old Virginia by Stuart Edward White. The ring around the sun had thickened all day long, and the turquoise blue of the Arizona sky had filmed. Storms in the dry countries are infrequent but heavy, and this surely meant storm. We had ridden since sunup over broad mesas, down and out of deep canyons, along the base of the mountains in the wildest parts of the territory. The cattle were winding leisurely toward the high country. The jackrabbits had disappeared, the quail lapped. We did not see a single antelope in the open. It's a case of hold up, the cattleman ventured his opinion. I have a ranch over in the double R. Charlie and Windy Bill hold it down. We'll tackle it. What do you think? The four cowboys agreed. We dropped into a low, broad watercourse, ascended its bed to big cottonwoods and flowing water, followed it into box canyons between rim rock carved fantastically and painted like a Moorish facade, until at last, in a widening below a rounded hill, we came upon an adobe house, a fruit tree, and a round corral. This was the double R. Charlie and Windy Bill welcomed us with soda biscuits. We turned our horses out, spread our beds on the floor, filled our pipes, and squatted on our heels. Various dogs of various breeds investigated us. It was very pleasant, and we did not mind the ring around the sun. "'Somebody else is coming,' announced the cattleman, finally. "'Uncle Jim,' said Charlie, after a glance. A hawk-faced old man, with a long white beard and long white hair, rode out from the cottonwoods. He had on a battered, broad hat, abnormally high of crown, carried across his saddle a heavy eight-square rifle, and was followed by a half-dozen lolloping hounds. The largest and fiercest of the latter, catching sight of our group, launched himself with lightning rapidity at the biggest of the ranch dogs, promptly nailed that canine by the back of the neck, shook him violently a score of times, flung him aside, and pounced on the next. During the ensuing few moments that hound was the busiest thing in the West. He satisfactorily whipped four dogs, pursued two cats up a tree, upset the Dutch oven and the rest of the soda biscuits, stampeded the horses, and raised a cloud of dust adequate to represent the smoke of battle. We others were too paralyzed to move. Uncle Jim sat placidly on his white horse, his thin knees bent over the oxbow stirrups, smoking. In ten seconds the trouble was over, principally because there was no more trouble to make. The hound returned leisurely, licking from his chops the hair of his victims. Uncle Jim shook his head. Trailer, he said sadly, is a little severe. We agreed heartily, and turned in to welcome Uncle Jim with a fresh batch of soda biscuits. The old man was one of the typical long hairs. He had come from the Galeuro Mountains in 69, and since 69 he had remained in the Galeuro Mountains, spite of man or the devil. At present he possessed some hundreds of cattle, which he was reputed to water in a dry season from an ordinary dishpan. In times past he had prospected. That evening, the severe trailer having dropped to slumber, he held forth on big game hunting and dogs, quartz claims and Apaches. Did you ever have any close calls? I asked. He ruminated a few moments, refilled his pipe with some awful tobacco, and told the following experience. In the time of Geronimo, I was living just about where I do now, and that was just about in line with the raiding. You see, Geronimo and Jew and Old Loco used to pile out of the reservation at Camp Apache, raid south to the line, slip over into Mexico when the soldiers got too promiscuous, and raid there until they got ready to come back. Then there was always a big medicine talk. Says Geronimo, I am tired of the warpath. I will come back from Mexico with all my warriors, if you will escort me with soldiers and protect my people. All right, said the general, being only too glad to get him back at all. So then in ten minutes there wouldn't be a buck in camp, but next morning they shows up again, each with about fifty head of hosses. Where do you get those hosses? asked the general, suspicious. 
had em pastured in the hills answered geronimo i can't take all those hosses with me i believe they're stolen said the general my people cannot go without their hosses says geronimo so across the line they goes and back to the reservation in about a week there's fifty-two frantic greasers wanting to know where's their hosses the army is nothing but an importer of stolen stock and knows it and can't help it well as i says i'm between camp apache and the mexican line so that every raiding party goes right on past me the point is that i'm a thousand feet or so above the valley and the renegades is in such a hurry about that time that they never stop to climb up and collect me often i've watched them trailing down the valley in a cloud of dust then in a day or two a squad of soldiers would come up and camp at my spring for a while they used to send soldiers to guard every water hole in the country so the renegades couldn't get water after a while from not being bothered none i got to thinking i wasn't worth while to them me and johnny hooper were pecking away at the old virginia mine then we got down about sixty feet all timbered and was thinking of cross-cutting one day johnny went to town and that same day i got in a hurry and left my gun at camp i worked all the morning down at the bottom of the shaft and when i see by the sun it was getting along towards noon i put in three good shots tamped them down lit the fuses and started to climb out it ain't no ways pleasant to light a fuse in a shaft and then have to climb about a fifty-foot ladder with it burning behind you i never did get used to it you keep thinking now suppose there's a flaw in that fuse or something and she goes off in six seconds instead of two minutes where'll you be then it would give you a good boost towards your home on high anyway so i climbed fast and stuck my head out the top without looking and then i froze solid enough there about fifty feet away climbing up the hill on mighty tired hosses was a dozen of the ugliest chiricahuas you ever don't want to meet and in addition a mexican renegade named maria who was worse than any of em i see at once their hosses was tired out and they had a notion of camping at my waterhole not knowing nothing about the old virginia mine for two bits i'd have let go all halts and dropped backwards trusting to my thick head for easy lighting then i heard a little fizz and sputter from below at that my hair riz right up so i could feel the breeze below under my hat for about six seconds i stood there like an imbecile grinning amiably then one of the cheery cowers made a sort of grunt and i said that they'd seen the original exhibit your uncle jim was making of himself then that fuse gave another sputter and one of the apaches said "Unda." that means white man it was harder to turn my head than if i'd had a stiff neck but i managed to do it and i see that my oar dump wasn't more than ten foot away i mighty near over jumped it and the next i knew i was on one side of it and those apaches on the other probably i flew leastways i don't seem to remember jumping that didn't seem to do me much good the renegades were grinning and laughing to think how easy a thing they had and i couldn't rightly think up any arguments against the notion at least from their standpoint they were chattering away to each other in mexican for the benefit of maria or oh, they had me all distributed down to my suspender buttons and me squatting behind that oar dump about as formidable as a brush rabbit then all at once one of my shots went off down in the shaft boom says she plenty big and a slather of rocks and stones came out of the mouth and began to dump down promiscuous on the scenery i got one little one in the shoulder blade and found time to wish my oar dump had a roof and those renegades caught it square in the thick of trouble one got knocked out entirely for a minute by a nice piece of country rock in the head otra vez yells i which means again boom goes the old virginia prompt as an answer i put in my time dodging but when i gets a chance to look the apaches has all got to cover and is looking scared otra vez yells i again boom says the old virginia this was the biggest shot of the lot and she surely cut loose i ought to have been halfway up the hill watching things from a safe distance but i wasn't lucky for me the shaft was a little on the drift so she didn't quite shoot my way but she distributed about a ton over those renegades they sort of half got to their feet uncertain otra vez yells i once more 
as bold as if I could keep her shooting all day. It was just a cold, raw blazer, and if I didn't go through I could see me as an Apache parlor ornament. But it did. Those Chiricahuas gave one yell and skipped, and it was surely a funny sight, after they got aboard their war ponies, to see them trying to dig out on horses too tired to trot. I didn't stop to get all the laughs, though. In fact, I give one jump off that ledge, and I lit a running. A quarter hoss couldn't have beat me to that shack. There I grabbed my good old gun and meat in the pot, and made a climb for the tall country. Uncle Jim stopped with an air of finality and began lazily to refill his pipe. From the open mud fireplace he picked a coal. Outside the rain, faithful to the prophecy of the wide-ringed sun, beat fitfully against the roof. That was the closest call I ever had, he said at last. End of The Old Virginia By Stuart Edward White Recording by Lynn Thompson